Welcome to our quick overview of The Last Man on Earth, a 1964 movie that's full of surprises. The movie offers a mix of humor, shock, and sadness, making it an entertaining watch. Keep tuned in, as there are many interesting facts about it coming up. Have you ever watched a movie that stays with you long after it's over? The Last Man on Earth is one of those films. It's become a symbol of the industry, but what exactly makes it stand out? Do you have a special memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more insights and anecdotes about the movie. You won't want to miss it. In a recent assessment of the 1964 movie adaptation of The Last Man on Earth, the reviewer wasn't happy with how closely it stuck to the original story. They thought the film didn't do a good job of turning a character meant for books into something exciting on screen. One big issue was the constant narration, which made the story feel too explanatory. The review also talked about the movie's look and sound. It was filmed in Italy and tried to copy a certain style of filmmaking, but the reviewer thought it just made the movie slow and awkward. They didn't think Vincent Price, who played the main character, did a great job either. Despite his fame in low-budget films, his performance here felt flat. The reviewer compared The Last Man on Earth to another adaptation from 1971 called The Omega Man, saying it was more fun to watch even though it didn't stick closely to the original book. This shows how hard it is to turn a book into a good movie sometimes. In summary, the review said that while The Last Man on Earth tried to stay true to its source material, it didn't do a good job overall in how it was made, and it didn't grab the audience's attention like it should have. Vincent Price, a well-known actor famous for his roles in different movies, once shared a funny story. While on a plane to a fantasy film festival in Barcelona, a woman thought he was Boris Karloff and asked for his autograph. Vincent didn't correct her and signed it as Boris Karloff, making the woman happy. Vincent Price acted in many famous films. He was in three movies nominated for Best Picture Oscars, The Song of Bernadette, Wilson, and The Ten Commandments. He also showed his cleverness on the TV show The $64,000 Question, winning $32,000 as a prize. These stories give us a peek into Vincent Price's varied career, showing there's more to him than just his famous movie roles. Vincent Price, famous for his spooky roles in many scary movies, including ones with House in the title, acted in a total of eight such films. His grandpa, Vincent Clarence Price, invented Dr. Price's baking powder. Charlton Heston, who later starred in a new version of a film called The Omega Man, didn't like the original much. He said it was badly done, pointing out problems with how scary it was, the acting, the writing, and how it was filmed. His criticism affected how he approached making the new version. Later on, he went back to the original film's ideas and themes to make them better, trying to fix the issues he saw. The new version got a lot of praise, showing that Heston was good at spotting what makes a movie great. This change showed how making movies is a process of improving, with criticism helping to make things better. So, Heston's feedback not only influenced how he acted, but also improved the film itself, making the story and look of the movie better. This shows how movies are made in a team effort, always trying to make things better. Both versions of the film show how humans can survive tough situations and keep going, with each version giving its own take on the story. Richard Matheson, the creator of The Last Man on Earth, expressed dissatisfaction with Vincent Price's casting in the lead role of Robert Morgan. Despite being a celebrated actor, Vincent Price's portrayal didn't align with Matheson's vision. Interestingly, Vincent Price, known for his iconic roles, had a personal life intertwined with the film's production. His second wife, Mary Grant, gave birth to their daughter, Victoria Price, during the same period. Vincent Price, with a penchant for classic acting, admired luminaries such as Ronald Coleman, Edward G. Robinson, James Cagney, John Gielgud, Greta Garbo, and Ava Gardner. His appreciation for these actors sheds light on his approach to his craft, although it diverged from Matheson's expectations for The Last Man on Earth. Vincent Price, a famous actor, had a close friendship with Cassandra Peterson, known for her well-loved character Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. His first wife, Edith Barrett, gave birth to their son Vincent Leonard Price III in 1940. Although the movie didn't do well in theaters at first, it later gained a strong fan base. It's interesting how a movie can become a favorite over time, despite not doing well initially. Its significance sticks with audiences, making it an important part of movie history. In the 1964 movie, The Last Man on Earth, Vincent Price secured his role as Alberti by casually chewing gum during his audition in Chicago, earning him a male newcomer award. Despite his genteel demeanor, Price was known for his eccentricity, 
often indulging in dramatic gestures when discussing his passions for cooking and poetry. Notably, he featured in six films enshrined in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress for their cultural significance, including Laura, Leave Her to Heaven, and House of Usher. Additionally, Price made an appearance in Michael Jackson's Thriller music video, further cementing his legacy in cinema. Vincent Price, famous for his roles in old movies, made important impacts on cinema. Later in life, he did interesting things with his fans. When people asked for his autograph, he often signed Dolores Del Rio instead of his own name. This was because he made a promise to honor the memory of the actress Dolores Del Rio. Price was known for being playful and respectful when he met other actors. During the making of The Whales of August, Lillian Gish joked about finally meeting her Prince Albert, referencing Queen Victoria Regina. There's a book called Attack of the Monster Movie Makers by Tom Weaver, which has a transcript of Price answering questions at a Fangoria convention in the 1990s. This transcript gives us more insights into Price's thoughts about his career. Vincent Price's stories and interactions still interest fans today, showing how much he's remembered in movies. Vincent Price, a famous figure in American movies, had a diverse career. Besides acting, he loved Native American art. His political views changed a lot. At first, he voted for Wendell Wilkie because he was raised conservatively, but later he became a strong liberal Democrat. He also did the voiceover for Michael Jackson's famous thriller music video. One of his memorable movies is The Last Man on Earth from 1964. Vincent Price once shared a story about going to Bella Lugosi's funeral with Peter Laura. When they saw Lugosi dressed in his famous Dracula cape, Laura jokingly suggested putting a stake through Lugosi's heart, just in case. Price really liked his role in Theater of Blood, especially because he enjoyed Shakespearean plays. When Price started at Universal Studios, he missed out on some roles like in Prescription for Romance and That Certain Age, which went to other actors. Despite these setbacks, Price's career took off and he became a big part of movie history. Vincent Price, known for his roles in horror films, had an opportunity to showcase his versatility in a production of Shakespeare's Titus Andronicus in Central Park. Sadly, the director, Charles Ludlam, passed away before the project could come to fruition. This mischance added to Price's diverse career, which included his portrayal in The Last Man on Earth. The Last Man on Earth is the first of three adaptations of Richard Matheson's novel, preceding The Omega Man and I Am Legend. It explores the theme of loneliness in a post-apocalyptic world, a narrative that resonated with audiences over the years. Vincent Price's career faced challenges during the Red Scare due to his political views. He was partly blacklisted, but managed to salvage his career by signing an oath disavowing communist sympathies. This episode sheds light on the complexities of Hollywood during that era, 